Welcome back, neighbors. Last time, we covered four fundamental quantities of machine design. Distance, time, mass, and force. And we looked at how they all interrelate in Newton's foundational second law. Now today, we're going to introduce units of measurement that can be applied to these quantities such that they have meaning in the real world. So let's go grab the text, and we'll continue. So this will wrap up the preface to Dr. Kennedy's book and we'll start with distance. Remember, distance is a measure of length. And we add a unit to that measure in order for it to make sense in the real world, right? You say, I am six feet tall or two meters tall. You don't say, I am a distance tall. All right, so the unit you use depends on what system of measurement we're talking about. There are two leading systems. One is the System International, the SI, or metric system, in which the baseline unit of distance is the meter. There is also the standard or, or imperial system of measurement, and the baseline unit for distance is the foot. Now the baseline unit of time is the second. And now that we have units for both distance and time, we can calculate acceleration. For example, the acceleration due to gravity on Earth is 32.2 feet per second per second, or it is 9.81 meters per second per second in the metric or SI system. Now, mass is an interesting one. It is an intrinsic property of matter. So we don't perceive it. We perceive a force when a mass is accelerating. So in order to really understand mass, we have to jump to force. But first, let's define the baseline units of measurement for mass. In the standard system, or imperial system, that is the slug. In the metric, or SI system, it is the gram. Now, to really wrap our heads around this, let's take a trip to outer space. Out here in space, we can look at mass independent of weight. Here I have a mass of water. On Earth, this would weigh one pound. That means that 32 of these equals the mass of one slug. Because out here in space, this pound of water has one thirty-second of a slug in terms of mass, such that if we were to multiply this one thirty-second of a slug by the 32 feet per second per second acceleration due to gravity on Earth, that equals one, one pound. Similarly, This, on Earth, would be one Newton. So 9.8 of these would have the mass of one kilogram. In space, this is one 9.8 of a kilogram. And if we were to bring it to Earth and multiply it by the 9.8 meters per second per second acceleration due to gravity, we would get one Newton. Now, before we go back down to Earth, we need to introduce one more bonus unit. Recall Newton's second law, that force equals mass times acceleration, which is just the relationship among the four fundamental quantities, distance, time, mass, and force. For the metric system, that's kilogram, second, meter, and Newton, such that on Earth, one Newton is just one 9.8 of a kilogram multiplied by the 9.8 meters per second squared, that is the acceleration due to gravity. For the standard system, the units for distance, time, mass, and force is the foot, second, slug, and pound, such that one pound on Earth is one thirty-second of a slug multiplied by the 32 feet per second squared acceleration due to gravity. Now here's the bonus unit. At some point in history, someone thought, wouldn't it be nice if the quantity of force units equaled the same quantity of mass units? Right now, they don't. To get one pound of force on Earth, we'd need one thirty-seconds of a slug. 
By using the pound mass unit, the quantity of force units equals the quantity of mass units. One pound of force equals one pound of mass on Earth. But you have to include a gravitational constant. You can see the GC in the denominator there. NGC equals 32 pounds of mass times feet over pounds of force, second squared. And in case it isn't clear, I'm rounding for this video. It's really 32.174. So anyways, if you're gearing up for the PE exam, then you need to know what system of measurement you're dealing in, metric or standard. And then within standard, are you dealing in slugs or pounds of mass? They each have their own merits. It can be confusing, but there are reasons for why the different units exist. All right, let's go back down to Earth. And so those are the units for the fundamental quantities, distance, time, mass, and force. Okay, thanks for watching.